स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay so good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to talk about uh, the final topic uh, regarding the uh, final topic on the necessary condition for finding the extremal uh, of the functional namely on how to find the transformation or the variational symmetry that leads to the conservation law remember in my previous lecture we had spoken about noether's theorem which relates the variational symmetries with the conservation law so all it remains now is how to find these variational symmetries so then towards the later half of this uh, discussion i am also going to touch upon uh, the new topic of finding the sufficient condition for an extremal namely the topic on second variation so the topic will cover today uh, two parts uh, first we will cover uh, we will discuss about how to find the transformation or the variational symmetries that lead to uh, the conservation laws okay and the second half of this discussion will involve uh, involve finding the second variation and second variation of the functional okay what is the use and what is why do we need to see the second variation okay so as i had mentioned in my previous lecture noether's theorem provides me the conservation law provides me the conservation law if we know if we know the variational symmetry right so the the key is to find these variational symmetries let me denote it by vs right so which means or in other words all we need to find are the infinitesimal generators of these uh, transformations okay so only thing that we need to find only need to find infinitesimal generators generators <coughs> zeta comma eta that we saw in our previous lecture okay uh, so so without you know going much into further discussion i am going to right away provide the results on how to find these in infinitesimal generators and the result is in the form of a theorem we will use this theorem in some of our examples which will follow next to look at how to uh, apply this result okay so let let us say that we are given a functional of the form integral x0 to x1 f of x comma y comma y prime uh, dx the transformation and we are given the transformations x is equal to theta of xy epsilon and y is equal to psi of xy epsilon so these are my these are my uh, my transformations with uh, with infinitesimal generators uh, infinitesimal generators xi comma eta infinitesimal generator xi comma eta so we say that uh, we say that this transformation this is a variational symmetry this is a variational symmetry for for j if and only if so this is a necessary and sufficient condition right if and only if this following differential equation is satisfied so zeta times del f no well d zeta times partial f partial x plus eta times partial f partial y plus eta prime Uh, eta prime minus y prime z prime times partial f partial y prime 
plus uh, xi prime f is equal to 0. So, if and only if we, the moment we satisfy these uh, this differential equation, we are guaranteed to uh, say that xi comma eta is the infinitesimal generator or uh, leading to our variational symmetries. Okay. The key thing is, let me call this as 1. The, the key thing is that this 1 does not necessarily holds only for extremals y. It will hold for all x and y in the given domain, which means we can in order to find out xi comma eta from this equation, we can essentially equate the coefficients of various powers of uh, let us say y prime, right, keeping x and y fixed. So, what I just said is the following. So, relation 1, relation 1 holds holds for all y, not just not just for extremals. They hold for all y, not just for extremals. Uh, and uh, we will see that. Uh, so, so the other issue that I highlighted is typically z xi is a function of x y and eta. So, xi and eta they are both functions of x y right. So, we can we can assume since they are only functions of x and y it implies we can treat our variable we can treat y prime as our y prime which is d y d x as independent variable right. So, they do not appear in the expression or in the uh, expression for eta and xi the infinitesimal generator. So, which means all we have to do is we have to equate uh, to get eta and xi we have to equate the coefficients of various powers of y prime. Okay. So, so for example, let us look uh, look at a case as to what I just said. So, for example, suppose uh, suppose uh, notice that uh, I am going to use a short shorthand notation. So, in particular this expression on the right hand side is said to be a function w of x comma y comma y prime. So, this is this is set equal to 0 right. So, in particular suppose suppose w is of this form a y prime square a plus b y prime plus c set equal to 0. Now, typically a, b, c they are all uh, they are all functions right. So, they are all functions of x, y, eta, xi uh, and and eta prime, xi prime. So, these are all the variables that we can get and similarly this is the same for b and same for c right. So, which means uh, all I just said is to find out the relation eta and xi, we just equate these coefficients which are uh, coefficients of powers of y prime to 0, right. So, we get 3, we get 3 relations here, 3 relations for, for 2 unknowns, 2 unknowns which are eta and xi, right. So, xi and eta, okay, right. So, so, which means it seems that the system is over determined, but we will see that is not the case because xi and eta they correspond to the infinitesimal generators of the variational symmetry. So, variational symmetries are very special they will not be found for every functional. So, this although it seems the system is over determined we will see generally that will not be a problem. Okay. So, so, so what I just said is that we can can get over determined can get over determined system can get over determined system. So, and that is not so that is not a problem no problem since since variational symmetries are special relations are special special relations and not every functional every functional will have them has them okay we will see 
these uh, these ideas through some examples very soon. Okay, so the example that I have in today's lecture, so I am going to, uh, so this is a new sequence. So I start with example number one. So the first example is we recall our example in the previous lecture. So recall example five in lecture fifteen, our previous lecture, and that for that we said we took a functional of the form x y prime square dx right an integral from x0 to x1 and uh, so my condition 1 my condition 1 here uh, we we directly use our condition 1 so condition 1 gives us the following equation i see that this is so i'm just writing down so the first term is uh, is uh, xi y prime square. So, notice that this is nothing but xi times uh, partial f partial x and plus there is no function of y. So, plus a 0 plus the next relation is the next relation is uh, del f del y prime. So, 2 x y prime times eta x plus y prime eta y minus uh, minus y prime times zeta x plus y prime zeta y and so this is the relation uh, del partial f partial y prime uh, eta prime minus y prime xi prime right okay uh, so okay so then the other terms in this equa in this expression involved involves plus plus so let me write down x y prime times zeta x plus y prime zeta y right and these are all set equal to 0. Notice that uh, well this last expression comes from the last term xi so xi prime f in our condition 1 ok. So, let us now so all that remains in this uh, expression is now we have to equate the different uh, powers of y prime ok. So, when we do that we are going to get so comparing comparing the coefficients of comparing the coefficients of y prime cube we compare the coefficients of y prime square and y prime and so that is it. So, we get the following expressions we set all of them equal to 0 the first expression gives us x zeta y is equal to 0 xi y the second gives us xi plus 2 x eta y minus x xi x is equal to 0 and the, the third expression gives us x eta y is equal to 0 right. I call these relations as a b and c ok. So, from a I am going to get uh, I am going to get that xi is a function of x purely right because x can not be 0 in general it has to be xi y which is 0 and from from c I get that eta must be equal to eta of uh, eta of well do we have well this last expression is x times eta x. So, eta here must be a function of y right. Now, we plug we plug all this we plug all this uh, this uh, result into our expression for y square right y prime square and what we get is when we do that I get so z, xi of x plus well let me club all the x terms together x times xi of derivative of xi uh, divided by 2 x plus eta well let me take 2 here plus 2 times eta y is equal to 0. Now, which means that this quantity that I am denoting with a bracket can be equated to the negative of 2 eta y because now since notice that this bracketed quantity is purely a function of x and this quantity is purely a function of y and that and then 
they are uh, negative equal to each other provided both of them are constants right so which means what we are getting is that uh, that uh, so we are going to set uh, so set so this means that uh, xi minus x xi x by x is equal to a constant c 1 is equal to negative 2 eta y right so that is what we will uh, well in fact it is better that we put 2 here so let me plug in the 2 here and then it will be easier okay so this becomes negative eta y so i i see that from here i get eta uh, is equal to negative c1 y plus c2 so that is my functional dependence on of y on eta functional dependence uh, of y on eta and also uh, solving the first equation so i have that xi minus x xi x is equal to 2 x c 1 uh, and from here if i divide throughout by x well what i have is so eta y is uh, so I get yeah so continuing well all I have to do is we have to solve for psi let me write down the solution we have to just integrate once and the solution that I get from here is psi of x is negative 2 c 1 x log x plus c 3 x ok. So, now notice well I must say that we have now got the infinitesimal generators, but notice that these generators are unique up to a family of constants right. So, that is something I wanted to mention uh, I should have mentioned a little bit earlier. So, let us go back uh, my infinitesimal generators my inf xi and eta are determined determined uniquely uniquely up to a constants up to integration constants they are determined uniquely up to integration constants and so let us come back to the example we are discussing so note that suppose suppose we take we take my c1 to be minus 1 c2 to be 0 and c3 to be 0 right so suppose we take all these uh, values uh, I get my generators, I get my generators uh, xi to be equal to 2 x log x right and my eta to be y ok. And this is the same result, the same result that we saw in our previous lecture, same result as in example 5, uh, lecture 5 ok we saw that this was one of the infinitesimal generators and we have recovered that through specific set of these constants ok. So, uh, our next example shows that the this whole idea of finding infinitesimal generators by solving this condition 1 uh, may not yield any result. So, let us look at the case the second example involves uh, this functional which is integral x 0 to x 1 x square y prime square plus y to the power 4 uh, dx. So, we need to find the variational symmetries. So, find the variational symmetries ok. So, condition 1 using condition 1. So, I am not going to write down condition 1, but write away write down the coefficients of various powers of y prime and uh, so these are see these are the 4 conditions. Uh, we get x square zeta y is equal to 0. Students should check that indeed we get all these conditions by equating the coefficients equal to 0, the coefficients of the independent variable y prime. So, I get x square zeta y, uh, let me call this as condition A. I call the second condition 2 x xi plus 2 x square eta y minus 
x square psi x which is equal to 0 right and I also let us look at this 2 x square eta x plus y 4 eta y is equal to 0. So, I call this as condition C and finally, I have 4 eta y cube plus z xi x y to the power 4 set it equal to 0 I call this condition number D right ok. So, from here I can again immediately conclude from first relation that xi is a function of x right and uh, well there is one more. So, xi is a function of x from condition number c from condition number c we see that xi y. So, since xi y is 0 I see that eta x must be 0. So, from here this condition I can see that eta x must be equal to 0 or eta is a function of y right because this quantity is 0 concluded from condition a. So, then we can use condition b and d. So, which means let us use condition b. So, from condition b notice that psi is a function of x. So, I get 2 x psi of x uh, plus minus x square psi of x uh, divided by 2 x square plus eta y is equal to 0. And again I see that this is a function purely of x and this is equated to negative of eta y and that is only possible this is only a function of y and this is only possible when eta y is a constant well eta y is a constant eta y is a constant right. So, eta y is a constant or my eta is a straight line L let us call this as uh, constant c 3 y plus c 4. Now, so we have found one variational symmetry let us now plug it back let me call this. So, from the last expression that I have from from d what I get is uh, well. So, d was the following. So, from d I get uh, 4 times c 3 y plus c 4 uh, plus c 4. So, this is my eta y cube plus xi x. So, what is xi x? Uh, we have not found divided by y to the power 4 plus xi x. This is equal to 0. Uh, notice that now again we have a purely a function of y on the left hand side this is equated to xi x. So, from here well so xi is so this is a function of x right and this is equated to negative of a function of y. So, from here I get xi x is again a, a constant and which means so this is another constant which means I can find that my xi is a straight line. So, c 1 x plus c 2. So, I have found my variational symmetry in the in terms of 4 family of 4 constants, but let us see what happens. So, let me call these 2 relations these 2 relations as my relations E. So, if I plug relation E into B go, uh, plugging this back into B. So, so use E into B. So, using E into B I see the following I see that this is 2 x c 1 x plus c 2 plus 2 x square c 3 minus x square c 1 and from here I am going to uh, equating the various powers of x I am going to see that uh, we get 2 relations c 2 is equal to 0 and I get that 2 c 3 plus c 1 is equal to 0 right. And then we again use E into the relation D into D I get that the following. So, 4 times c 3 y 
plus c 4 y cube plus c 1 y to the power 4 set equal to 0, I get the relation c 1 is 0. Uh, well, so c 4 is 0 and I also get that 4 c 3 plus c 1 is 0. So, so if I were to equate all these these four equations which is circled, I am going to get only one unique solution c 1 equal to c 2 equal to c 3 equal to c 4 is equal to 0 or in other words I get I get that my infinitesimal gen generators xi comma eta they are identically 0 right or which means the conclusion is that there are there is no non trivial or in fact there is no variational symmetry in this example. So, variational symmetries may not exist. Okay. So, if they exist they will satisfy if and only if they satisfy the conditions that I have shown. So, variational symmetries may not exist for a functional. It all depends if it is variationally invariant or not the functional itself. Okay. So, so I am going to end the discussion on finding variational symmetries by extending the result of, uh, of condition 1 to functions of several dependent variables and then look at an example. Okay, so, then let me state another result in the form of a theorem. So, this is for several dependent variables, several dependent variables. I see that let us consider uh, j of q bar equals integral from t 0 to t 1 l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot d t right, where q bar is q 1 q 2 q n and my uh, and let, let me consider my variational symmetry as the infinitesimal generator as follows. So, is xi comma eta 1 to eta n. So, these are my infinitesimal generators, infinitesimal generators if and only if a certain condition holds. So, before that let me introduce a function. So, let me introduce, so let me introduce the function known as the prolongation operator, the, the first order prolongation operator of this Lagrangian. Okay, also known as P R superscript one of V of L, right? Uh, so so V of L. This is nothing but xi del L del T. Uh, students should not be very much confused with this expression because they can right away look at condition one. So this prolongation operator in this condition one will correspond to this the multivariate version of this uh, this underlined quantity all these three quantities ok so note that so the operator becomes as follows so this is plus so we are working in several several dependent variables k from 1 to n times as well of eta k del l del q k plus p k of eta k dot minus xi zeta xi dot q k dot right. Okay, so where so where the the quantities p k is del l del q k dot del l del q k dot and my quantity zeta dot zeta dot is introduced here, the quantity zeta dot is uh, del z, z, xi dot is del xi del t plus summation of q j dot uh, del xi del q j right. So, this is xi dot is del xi del t plus q j dot del xi del q j ok. And then I have also eta k dot. So, eta k dot is described as, so eta k dot is del eta k del t, essentially it is the chain rule, 
right times summation q j dot q j dot del eta k del uh, del q j ok. So, essentially this is all the chain rule that we are applying ok. So, then then the result says then the transformation then the transformation the transformation at t which is given by theta of t comma q bar comma epsilon and theta and q k which is psi k of t comma q bar comma epsilon from f is is a variational symmetry if and only if if and only if I have the prolongation operator P R 1 of V L plus L of psi dot is equal to 0. The prolongation operator plus this quantity is equal to 0. This is the multi uh, multi variable version of condition 1. Okay. So, this is for all Q the extremal Q smooth which is a smooth function on the interval t 0 to t 1. Okay. So, let us look at an application of this result. 